Hi, welcome to my channel Mostly Knitting. I'm Tash and this is a weekly podcast where I talk mostly about the knitting that I've been doing during the week and any other crafting if I happen to have done any. So if you're a returning viewer, thanks for coming back. And if you're new here, I hope you um, enjoy the podcast. Right, so I'm going to start with my finished objects, um, which I'm wearing, one of which I have two, one of which I'm wearing, and this is the Cumulus Tee by Petite Knit. And I knit it out of the recommended yarn, which is Knitting for Olive Pure Silk in the Colourway Ballerina. And it was a bit fraught. Um, I had some issues with it, with gauge in my swatch. I got 27 stitches over four inches, um, but then in the actual, and that's washed and blocked. But in the fabric as I was knitting, it ended up um, stretching out to 24 stitches, which is really different. Um, and I was a bit worried that it wasn't gonna fit, but actually it turns out to be, it has turned out to be really lovely. So I used the recommended needle size of three millimeters for the body and two and a half millimeters for the eye cord pickup for the sleeves and the neckline. Um, I did pick up less stitches around the neckline to sort of bring it in a little and that definitely helped um, and then I was a bit worried that it was puckering here but once I blocked it that worked out fine. So all this worrying, I don't know about worrying but a little bit of uncertainty would I actually, you know, would it actually fit? Um, yeah, it's turned out really well. So I, I did cast on four less stitches under the, um, under the arms for the sleeves and in the bind off the pattern actually suggests that you, not for the neck, but for the, or well, maybe for the neck too. I'll have to think about that for the neck. But certainly for the sleeves and the bottom, that you um, you actually, sort of every five or six stitches, you knit three together instead of knit two together to bring it in. But I found that I didn't need to do that. What I did do, at least on the bottom, was I actually switched all of the stitches over onto a 2.5 mil needle and then did the eye cord bind off so that when I was putting the stitches back on the needle, I wasn't putting them back on a three mil. I was putting them back onto a 2.5 and I think that helped to um, help to keep the eye cord bind off a little bit tighter. So yeah, it's worked out really nicely. It looks a tiny bit lower in the back probably because in the neckline through picking up less stitches, it's sort of raised it up just a little bit, um, but not crazy, like it's not vastly different. It's, these are reasonably high-waisted jeans, so my belly button you can see right here. Um, so it definitely covers the jeans. I can, you know, tuck it in. I mean, I could tuck it in the whole, I don't really, I've never been a bit of a tucker inner because that was kind of daggy when I was growing up. Um, so I'm sort of learning to do that now. So I suppose I could tuck it in the whole way around or I could just do that front tuck or whatever. I need to um, watch more of those styling videos. I watched um, Kutava Kika, um, Kika's Styling Your Knits video. And um, yeah, that was quite fun actually watching her do that. Um, yes, so anyway, um, yeah, I'm really happy with it. I'm trying to think what else I did differently. Um, I did um, do a little bit of duplicate stitching in here because just from the pickup, um, even though I picked up one for one there, like I picked up exactly what the pattern said, it was just a little bit open there, but just doing a bit of duplicate stitch sort of closed up some of those holes. And yeah, it's just, it's lovely. The fabric is really nice and light. I'm gonna untuck it just cause it's more comfortable. Um, yeah, and I don't think I did anything else differently. And I would definitely use this um, yarn again. I plan to, uh, but I might even, I might just go down a needle size next time I use it. So I don't think I have anything else more to say. Um, yeah, I think that's it. And I really like it. Yeah. So it's, it's nice with jeans, but I'd probably, I'd also wear it with a, a skirt or sort of dressy shorts or, um, yeah, I think it's, I think it's nice. It's oversized, but not crazy oversized. So anyway, that's my first finished object. My second finished object are the mitts for Mia. I finished both of them. So it's not even a half finished object. They're both done. And I don't have them to show because I've already given them to her. So she can actually wear them before. It's, it is a really warm day today. It's 24 degrees Celsius, which is about 75 Fahrenheit. Um, but it is still a bit cool in the morning. So she might get a bit of wear out of them still this season before things um, completely warm up. So one thing I did, um, so I will put a picture up of them. Uh, I ran out of the mohair, so I used, um, I used Rowan Kid Silk Haze in the Colourway Wicked and I actually ran out of that. Um, and then I used um, Mayak Baby Lace, Baby Yak, Baby Lace, Lace Baby Yak, something like that, um, also in a black colourway. 
And so when I, I was just doing the, the ribbing section on the thumb when I ran out of the mohair silk, and I forgot that I actually have some Isia yarn that's black mohair, I completely forgot. So I ended up just um, using the, the Baby Yak held double for that little bind off. And I don't know, I don't think you can tell in the photo. And if it, if it I don't think it will bother me. I don't even know that she'd notice. But if it does bother her, I can pull it out and get the ECA yarn and just do those, I think it was like five rows. So I didn't follow a pattern for that. I just, um, you know, I just made one up because it's pretty straightforward. Like you just have ribbing, stockinette, increase for the thumb gusset, remove the stitches for the thumb, knit the rest of the body as long as you want, bit of ribbing at the top, and then come back, do the thumb, decrease a few stitches, and you know, bit of ribbing at the top. So I did write up the pattern, so, and it is on Ravelry, but I didn't write it up like a pattern, it's just on my project page. And so that was with two strands of like a lace weight held double, or held together. Um, yeah, so I'm really happy that they're done. And that's it for my finished objects. So I think um, I might do my friends from the vault and then I'll do my um, works in progress. So my friends from the vault, um, I thought it might be kind of a nice thing for um, either people in the US going into fall or for us in Australia with spring coming or Southern hemisphere with spring coming. Uh, my friends from the vault is the Rodeo Drive Poncho. And I've got two of them here. It's by um, Stacy Perry. And I used, um, I think it's meant for a DK or a worsted weight yarn, but because of the nature of it, you could use any yarn. This is Madeline Tosh Alpaca Sport. And I find, even though it says it's a sport weight yarn, I think it knits up more like a DK. I don't even know why they call it sport, because it really is, like I get like 20 stitches over four inches, so that's not sport weight. Um, anyway, so I, this is um, Dr. Zhivago Sky. So what it is, is you start at the neckline, you do just a few rows of ribbing, and then you just incre increase out along these sections. And the back is just, um, you know, increases, and the center front is a cable, has a cable running down the front. And yeah, so this used, I used four skeins for this one and I'll try it on so you can see. Um, yeah, it's really nice and cozy. That's how, that's four skeins of the Alpaca Sport, which is about, what was it? Um, a thousand yards, maybe a bit less than a thousand yards. And yeah, I'll just step back. So you can see that's pretty, um, I mean, I'm pretty short, but this is quite, you know, quite a good length. And then the other one, um, I think I made this one, I can't remember, I think I made the other one, first, this one first. This is also Madeline Tosh Alpaca Sport and it's the colorway Luster. So I think I made these in 2017, something like that. Um, so they're, you know, they're six years old and they actually get quite a bit of wear. Um, let me see. This, so this one used, I used almost five skeins with this one. So you can see it's just that little bit longer, um, but not, hugely longer because obviously by the time you're getting one skein doesn't go as far down once your rows are getting are getting that long um yeah so they're really i've got my gray one and my beige one um and that pretty much does it for me i sort of i quite like these in in neutrals because it just means i can that um it'll go with with anything so they're my friends from the vault um i don't think i think i've pretty much followed the pattern i didn't do anything really that different because um, it's a poncho right so like as it's kind of a knit as um, knit for as long as you want so yeah they're my friends from the vault so um, my next section is my whips right so I don't have any new works in progress um, which means I've just got four um, works in progress on the needles the first one is the pie camisole by Nabita Jure and I'm knitting this out of Knitting for Olive Cotton Merino in, I can't remember the colorway, it's like Soft Aqua or something like that. Um, yeah, which is a really pretty off sort of, sort of um, subtle blue. And I use the recommended needles, which is a 2.5 for the body and a two mil for the ribbing. I um, did not do the Italian bind off. Um, I actually just, 
I find that my bind off with like just a normal standard bind off in ribbing with a needle uh, one size bigger is actually loose enough and I'm actually discovering that I don't think I even need to go up a needle size I'm quite I've gotten my tension with binding off now to where it's actually pretty consistent and it's quite stretchy without um, without actually even having to go up a needle size. So I did use a 2.25 mil to bind off for under the arms. Um, and I also did for the neck, but I think what I'm going to do is, I actually think it's actually a little bit too loose. So I definitely would have found it too loose if I used the Italian bind off. Um, it's actually got a little bit of, a um, little bit too gapy in the back. So I'm going to um, undo the bind off and redo it on a two mil needle. So, cause it's, it's plenty, plenty stretchy. And I think what I actually did, yeah, I just consciously tightened up on the front, but I think what I'll do, and I, cause I cast off the back first, what I will do is um, I'll go back and undo it and just do the whole thing on a two mil. Um, needle and I think then that will be fine. So yeah, I really like the high neckline. I think that's really quite flattering. You can see I'm wearing a regular bra and I think when I wear this, I won't because it's just, no matter how much I sort of try to tuck these under, I'd be constantly trying to push them under. It's not going to work. So this for me will definitely be worn as a, oh, with a strapless bra. Um, but it fits well. So I was a bit worried. My gauge is, so I'm sitting on the needles. My gauge is 35 stitches over four inches at least you know I haven't sort of fully washed this completely and blocked it so it'll be interesting to see if it has stretched out a little bit you can see that like it's not finished right it's still on the needles um but it's up to it's up to my belly button right now so I, I don't have a lot to go and yeah I'm hoping that this will be finished next week because I'm what I decided to do was to just pause on the body do all of the upper work it wasn't like I was going to run out of yarn I just prefer to try everything on, block it, and when I'm, actually I'm probably at that point where I might, I would block it and just see if it grows at all. This is a cotton merino blend, so it might grow a little bit. Um, yeah, so just so I can get the length right. But yeah, nearly finished. And um, except for obviously I've got to go back and um, redo the bind off. Now, Nabita Jure has come up with a new pattern. I'll put a picture of it up here, which is quite similar but it's a little bit different like the, well, you'll see in the picture. It's um, it's also got a, quite a different gauge. I think this one, the pattern gauge is 31 stitches over four inches and the other one is like something like 22. So it would definitely be definitely a different yarn. If this one I got 35, I'd be using a much heavier yarn. And I really like the, I mean, obviously that one would go quicker, but I really like the light, um, like the, just the light fabric and the, but you can see that's not skin, like there's no decreases down the body. I think it's finished at about maybe about 28 inches around the chest so there's definitely negative ease here um, but there's a little bit of positive ease here around the waist so because there's no um, no waist shaping to bring it in which is fine I don't really like if it just goes straight down that should be fine um, yeah and I probably would like to be able to tuck this in so similar to the cumulus I've just got probably another inch or so if it's hitting my belly button now, I'll probably have another couple of inches and then the ribbing. So this is the pie camisole. Um, anything else that I was going to say? Um, oh, yes. I will mention, actually, you know what? I might take it off and I'll show it up to camera because I just want to talk a little bit about the needles that I used. Is there anything else? Uh, and I wove in a lot of the ends. The only end that I didn't weave in was the one from the bind off. It always feels like I generally don't weave in the ends until the end. Of the project just in case I need to go back and change anything but because I was I knew I was happy with all of this except for this bind off I thought I'll weave in the ends and it's just I quite like working on something when the ends are all we woven in you don't have just bits of yarn flying everywhere um, or getting caught on stuff or yeah so anyway yeah really nice pattern um, and I would make another one for sure like and, I, and I'm definitely keen to use the knitting for olive cotton merino again I really really like this yarn um anything else oh i chose to make the x a sort of a hybrid between the one xs and the two xs sort of somewhere in between the two because of my gauge difference um yeah and i think that's it so i'm i'm gonna um, change into my next work in progress and then i'll just mention something about the the needles the two millimeter needles that i used 
Right, so the way the pattern is written, you pick up these um, around the armhole on each side first, and that's knit flat. And then after that, you pick up along all the way around, and then this is knit in the round. So I'm just gonna show you the difference between the ribbing. That's my ribbing knit flat. And then that's my ribbing knit in the round. And the ribbing knit in the round is looking a lot less even and a little bigger. And it's because I, I only own, I don't know if you've seen any of my earlier podcasts, but I have like a ridiculous amount of needles, but I only own one two millimeter needle. And I think it might even be, I think it might be 60 centimeters or 80 centimeters. It's a long, I mean, even 80 centimeters, it's a long needle. And I was struggling and that the shaft of the needle, like, you know, you've got the cable and then you've got the two tips. The tips of the needles are actually very long. And I was sort of struggling, you know, I was fighting with the needles a bit to do this, to get it around. And so I think it actually distorted my tension a little bit. So I'm going to order some two millimeter needles. Now, normally I'd pick them up from my local yarn store, Skein Sisters, but they don't seem to have any in stock. Um, and I'm not sure when they, when they're doing a next Chiagu order. So I might order from Sunspun or, and I'm not gonna try and get up to the $200 of shipping. I'll just, I'll just order the needles, but I think I'll order two millimeters in a 40 centimeter and a 60 centimeter. Because I also like making the skimmer socks and that uses two mil needles as well. Now I do have, um, I do have this, which is like, um, what do you call it? Like little double pointed needles. And I do have that down to a two, that's a two mil, that one there, but I didn't, I didn't really want to do the whole neckline on a, or is it the neckline on double points, especially because they're quite short double points. Like I just thought things would be falling off. Anyway, I fought with a long needle for a while. I'm hoping that that will sort of block out and be a little bit more even. It's not horrible, right? But it's not as, sorry, I'm, I'm trying not to have it this bang on the table. That's the side ribbing, which I think is pretty even and neat. And that's the neck ribbing, which is definitely not as neat. So we'll see how we go. Um, yes, but I'm, I'm going to order um, a couple more needles from Sunspun. Did I already say I use them for the skimmer socks? So with the skimmer socks, um, I end up just using the double points, but it would be nice to have a couple of two millimeter needles. I really never thought I'd be doing this much knitting on two mil needles, but there you go. Um, yeah, look, it's like I'm enjoying the, I'm actually really enjoying the fine gauge. Like to, to make a top on, two, on on the body, two millimeter needles, that's pretty small. But yeah, I like it, nice and light. So yes, and that's that's what I've got left of the third ball. And I do have probably like a little small ball as well. But I, I thought, well, I'll just use this one because I've definitely got enough and then I wouldn't have to join another ball or whatever. So yep, I reckon that one might even be finished next week. So that's my... Um, first work in progress. My second I've actually put on and it is the um, Anna T by Sarah Stark and it's using Drover and Classa Bellevue Park five ply in the colorway Vintage Rose. Vintage Rose, yes. Now I did a German twisted cast on for the neckline and then picked up the stitches and it's for the neckline and the ribbing it's a um, it's a twisted rib where you actually twist the knits and the pearls. And yeah, I'm like, I'm happy with that. I was a little bit uncertain because of the construction you're doing increases every row. So it's sort of a little bit gathery here, but not horrible. I toyed with the idea of um, shoulder pads, but I haven't, um, I haven't sort of, I haven't, I actually went to Spotlight the other day, hmm. but I didn't even, I didn't even go via the, um, and I think what I will do is like, I'll grab like just sort of, you know, maybe a little face washer and stick that up there and see if I like it. But actually I'm kind of feeling all right with, with it as it is actually. I don't know if I need any shoulder pads. So what I did differently, the um, I, I used the recommended needle size, 3.75 mil for the body, um, three mil for the ribbing. The only thing that I did differently is I did the bind off as suggested for one sleeve and the neckline and it's a really stretchy bind off and it was just way too stretchy because that's I haven't fixed this sleeve that's the really stretchy bind off I mean that's just crazy like it's way too floppy whereas this, this is nice and I've fixed the neck um, bind off and I thought I'd show you actually this is the this is the yarn because obviously I 
um, I unpicked it. It was really, the yarn was very sticky. So I don't think it's super wash. I think it was like, it was already sort of starting to felt and I hadn't even worn it, right? Like I've only been sort of carrying it around in a bag, but you can see here. So there's the back of the neckline. Here is all where you can see it's kinky. That is all the extra yarn that was in the bind off. And then uh, that must be where the bind off ended. So look how much extra yarn there was. In the, I mean, that's just crazy, huge amount. So this is it now, it's totally fine, really like a nice, a nice normal sort of comfortable. And again, what did I do? Um, it was three mil for the ribbing and I used a 3.25 mil needle to bind off. And I bound off in pattern. So I twisted the knits and I twisted the pearls as I bound off as well. And it's totally fine. So no problem, that's the same here. And I will, um, I have to redo this one here. So I'll stand up now because it's actually nearly done. Similar, so there's my, there's my top of my, there's my belly button there, top of the jeans. So I think it's got another, probably similar to where I was at with my cumulus tee last week. It's got, this one's a little bit further along than the pie camisole. It's a little bit further down, but I'd say probably another inch. And then I don't think there is a lot of ribbing at the bottom. So another inch or so. And this one will be finished. Um, yeah, I feel like sticking a, a little ball of, or a little, hang on, I'll just grab something. Like a little thing of yarn. Now this is probably bigger than I would want for a shoulder pad, but let's have a look. Oh my God, <laughs> that's ridiculous. Okay, so it wouldn't be that big, um, but if I had a small ball of yarn, I mean, anyway, I'm just gonna do it and laugh at myself, but it's, I can't believe people used to wear these things. I don't think I'll be putting shoulder pads in this top. Even, I know that's like, way too big but even still I just can't um I can't see myself doing that it kind of almost looks a little bit like you know like the sleeve is a bit of like a little bit of um what do you call it that sort of puffy sleeve I'm sure that's not the technical word but you know what I mean um yeah I sort of have a feeling that it kind of looks a bit like that um yeah anyway um I like it it's got like a I guess you call it a saddle shoulder um and I'll definitely wear it. And the yarn is super, super soft. It's so, so lovely. Um, I hope it doesn't pill, but you know, oh well, if it does, I'll depill it. So, yep, so that's the Anna T by Sarah Stark. I, um, let me see, exploration, I've got two more um, works in progress, exploration station. I actually haven't made any progress on this at all. So I'll just show it in case you're new here and you haven't seen it. Um, this is exploration station by Stephen West. The pattern's been out for a very long time. Um, I'm using three colors of Madeleine Tosh Merino Light, Madeleine Tosh Tosh Merino Light in Antler and Neon Peach, which were in the original design. And then instead of El Greco, I'm using Graphite, which sort of is a, has a sort of a yellow undertone, dark color, like very dark gray. And then this peachy color, um, Stephen used Reindeer and I've used um, Swiss Yarns in this apricot color. And I've just still only just done those three rows of brioche. It's, I've had reports and stuff to write, so I haven't had a lot of, and I knew when I knit on this, I couldn't be doing anything else. So um, I haven't made any more progress on that, but I, I plan to this week. So, yep, so that's um, Exploration Station. And my last work in progress is the Muscle Bra Hat by Isolde Teague. And this actually did get a little bit of work because I, um, uh, I don't know what I was doing, something waiting somewhere and I needed portable knitting. And um, also because like these were getting to the point where I was like, eh, how much more do I have to go? And I don't want to, um, I don't want to overshoot it. So um, I put a marker in so I could see how much I did. So I did a bit and that's, um, I've got more than that left. I've got some other little balls because this is the yarn that I um used for my sorrel. So sorry, this was, um, or tried to use for the sorrel. This is 3.25 millimeter needles. I got up to 136 stitches and it's Hedgehog Fibers Skinny Singles. So yeah, in a really pretty colorway that was exclusive to Skein Sisters. So that's it, that's my four works in progress. Um, I think I'll change out of this and get into my next segment. Okay, so um, with my four works in progress, um, the muscle bra hat, I have no um, like timeline for when I want that finished. That's just my sort of take along. So I don't really, I almost don't count that. 
Um, in terms of active ones that I sort of want to get to completion and then start something new, the Anna T and the um, Pi Camus Hole are both almost finished. So there'll definitely be some new works in progress. Um, and then Exploration Station is kind of its own thing. I've got to pay attention a bit with the brioche. So yes, so I'll talk a bit more about that in my plans coming up, but I'll just start with purchases and then I'll get onto my plans. So what did I buy? I bought some Rit dye. Um, this is cherry red and it's a liquid one. It comes in a powder form as well, but I thought this, so this is to um, try to over dye this carnaby skirt. Um, and you can see there, there's like a really big color shift. Now I'm aware even when I over dye it, this will still be a bit darker than this, but hopefully, especially if I dip it, like if I dip this in first, and sort of hold it for a little bit and let some of this absorb the dye a little bit more. I don't know, this could be crazy, but like I'm gonna try it. Um, and you know, Karen suggested that and I think it's a good idea. Sort of get this part sort of dying a little, absorbing some of it and then dip, dip this in. And I'm hoping that that will um, fix that issue and yeah, make this wearable. Then I'll be ready to buy some buttons and um, have a new work in progress that I might actually be able to wear before the weather gets um, the weather gets too warm. So yes, so that's the Carnaby skirt, and um, I'm going to rescue that from from my hidden basket of whips. I'm not going to pull anything more out of that until um, that one's finished. So I bought that Rit dye. I also bought um, two patterns. I bought camisole number what numbers? four and five, four and five. So buy my favorite things. So they are both um, going to be, I'll talk about that in my plans. Um, and I also got, which I don't have yet, but um, some Neutrogen yarn came up on D-Stash in the Australian Knitters group. And I don't think I've ever seen Neutrogen yarn come up on D-Stash before. And I bought two colorways. So I will wait until that comes because it's only coming from Australia. It's actually only coming from New South Wales, so not too far away. So I should have that by next week to show. I don't know what for yet, but I'm sure I'll find something um, for it. So yes, so that's it for purchases. Um, what has caught my eye is just a yarn shop. I can't remember the name of the person who recommended Macquarie. It's in the ACT. Um, I'll put your name in the down bar. Um, thank you for recommending this yarn store. I haven't bought anything from there, but I did notice that they had quite a lot of yarn that I would maybe one day be interested, like some Isia yarn. And um, yeah, so it's just good for me to know of different local sources so that I don't um, think, oh, I've got to buy from overseas and then I have to make it a big purchase. Because um, I would like to, this won't sound like it at the moment, but I really would like to try to go more towards buying yarn for a specific project. And I know sometimes that doesn't always work out and you have to kind of let it go and try to find another project for that yarn that you've already purchased. But I find I tend to get a little bit, spend a little bit too much like attention on all by the yarn and then try to figure out the pattern. I've been doing this for about I don't know, 15 years, and I still haven't learnt. I still go, ah, buy all the yarn, and then try to figure out the pattern. So it's, yeah, I'm a work in progress. I do have some plans coming up, and you'll see most of the plans, the yarn that I've purchased, I have a specific plan for. So um, I am trying. Um, so the Neutrogen yarn's a bit of an exception because it is just such an unusual yarn, and it's kind of hard to get. So. I did purchase that but other like commercial yarn that's like even if it like knitting for olive like it's still going to be around next week next month I don't have to buy it all now so yes anyway um I think one of the things that kind of was a bit like that was yarns like Madeline Tosh that were hand dyed and you couldn't always get and you couldn't get the color it became a bit of a scarcity mentality buy it up before it's not available um well you know that's that's not very healthy and I have way more yarn than um, than I can manage at the moment. So yes, um, although you will see there's quite a few purchases coming in from the US, but um, I have plans for them. I have plans. So that's what I'm going to get to now, plans. So plans with yarn I already have. So I'm definitely going to make some more skimmer socks because they only take 30, 34, 36 grams of yarn, but I don't have yarn picked out. But I mean, I have that much fingering weight yarn. I know I will find some yarn for the skimmer socks. So because I finished Mia's mitts, um, 
I've allowed myself, I haven't cast it on yet, but I will allow myself to cast on some skimmer socks because that, that sort of fit that same bill of um, small, tight, tight knitting. So I thought, well, the mitts are done now. I will um, find some yarn for the skimmer socks and hopefully there'll be a, um, a new pair to show next week with, I don't know what yarn yet, but I'll find some. The other thing, obviously, I bought um, camisole number four and five. So camisole number four, I plan to use my Knitting for Olive Pure Silk in the raspberry, I think it's raspberry pink colorway. So um, those two balls should be enough for that camisole. And um, I might, I'm, I haven't actually read through the pattern yet, but my instinct is telling me to go down a needle size. I don't even know, I haven't um, looked at the swatch if it's, um, yeah, so the gauge is in pattern. So, but I already know that um, it's a different designer because I was thinking with petite knit, the gauge was meant to be 28 and I got 24, but different designers, different uh, gauges. So look, I could do, I could do a swatch. I'm meant to get 25 stitches and 32 rows in this kind of patterned rib. So I could swatch or I could just go down a needle size. Oh, I don't know. My swatch lied. I, I swatched last time and it lied. So um, anyway, maybe the needle size is meant to be, oh, 3.5. Mm, that doesn't sound, that doesn't sound good. That if I got 24 stitches in stockinette with a three mil needle, what am I going to get with a 3.5? Hmm, I better swatch. I'm going to swatch, but I think my first swatch will be with a 3.25 mil needle. And I, I, I will spend some time looking at other people's projects on Ravelry to see what kind of gauge people are getting. Okay, so that's that's one of my plans with yarn I have and pattern I have. So um, another one is Knitting for Olive. No, not Knitting for Olive. Um, my favourite thing is camisole number five. I have lots of options here. So this one is meant to be with um, Knitting for Olive Merino, I think. And of course, I started the, ooh, maybe I should get some Knitting for Olive Merino. Um, I think that's what it is, was, yes, Knitting for Olive Merino. But I did notice that Knitting for Olive Merino is 50 grams, 250 meters, which is quite a light fingering. So 100 grams, 500 meters, that's lighter than most of your fingering, most fingering weight yarns are uh, between 360 and four, even 400 meters is starting to get a bit light. 500 meters, I think that's a light fingering. So I remembered I have quite a lot of Volmai's lace. Now, Volmai's lace normally comes in a hank this big, 300 grams, and like, like massive. You can knit a dress. I have knit a dress. Oh, I forgot. I was meant to get... I have knit a dress out of this. Um, I'm going to go grab it. Right, I found the dress that I made out of, um, this is my still light tunic in um, Volmai's Lace in Petite Poison. It's a really lovely purple colorway. Actually, very, uh, a little bit darker than that one, more like this one in here. There's like three versions of Petite Poison. Anyway, so I knit this on 2.75 mil needles. That's a lot of knitting, right? That's 300 grams. I think nearly the whole skein um, to make a dress and that was a 2.75 mil needle and I just measured my gauge and I got 27 no 30 30 stitches on a 2.75 mil needle I got 30 stitches over four inches so that's really helpful for me to know if I do any other um, can you hear that it's it's raining and storming I'll probably have um, the dog um, He's very, he's very, he's cattle dog cross and he gets very nervous around the um, rain. He's probably in with my husband um, at the moment. He gets very scared and he's, he's gotten worse over time actually. Um, anyway, so back to, um, so this is, this is a lot to use. There's too much for a top, right? But I bought um, these kits called Walk on the Moon and they were meant to be for a shawl. I'll show you, I'll show you. this is the shawl pattern. Um, Anyway, that's the shawl pattern. Um, so I bought a couple of these kits and I used one, um, these two came from a kit that had some gray in it and I just used the gray for something else. 
and anyway so this is a hundred grams and that's about as much as I need I think I only need and, oh, and 500 meters, 520, 525 meters in 100 grams. So each one of these, like individually, could make a top, like, you know, or a sleeveless cami, anyway, like that. So, so yeah, I'm just like deciding. These are my other, um, my other three colors. Um, this is a really cool green, isn't it? Sh Schwefel. I don't know if that's how you say that, Schwefel. Um, yeah, it's a cool green. And that's Petite Poison Dark, which is probably the same as that, that dress. That's pretty similar, isn't it? Yep. So, yep. So I've got a few to choose from. So I don't need to be going and buying knitting for Olive Merino. I've got, this is 100%. I don't know if it's Merino. I think it is. No. Oh, yeah. 100% Merino Superwash. So, yes, lots of choices. So I'm not sure, oh, not sure what to make. I think I'm really feeling this one. Um, cause I have some, uh, sort of pants that I think this might go really nicely with for that. So that's my, um, that's another plan with yarn I have. Yay. Very exciting. Um, and let me see, what else do I have? Um, okay. Oh, so, um, the yarn's in the office, so I can't grab it cause my husband's on a work call, but, um, I think I'm going to make another Carnaby skirt in, I've got some Rowan filtered tweed DK in the colorway treacle. Now it's not, I think it's a very fine DK yarn. I don't, I think it's like 50 grams is 175 meters. That's pretty fine. So um, I think I would, could hold it double and it will give me that kind of tweed look and it's this really nice brown. Um, I'll put a picture up of the yarn because it's really, really pretty. And I think this skirt would look really nice in a tweed. And they're the ones of this pattern that really like jumped out at me. So, and I've got 10 skeins of it. So I've definitely got plenty to hold double. So what's that? That's 1,750 meters. And if I halve that 875 meters, that's plenty. Cause I think this was only like 500 meters. So I've got heaps of yarn. Yes, so that's, um, that's another upcoming plan. And the other thing that I was thinking of, but it's sort of moving down the list, um, I'm still, where's it gone? I'm still thinking of making another mini mock neck tank in that pink Western, Western Sky Knits colorway, because I've got one skein left of that. But it's, it's kind of getting shoved further down the list because um, there's other things that I want to make. Right, so that's, uh, well, that's not the end of my plans though. Um, with the yarn that's coming from, um, with my in-laws from the US, I'd like to make the Kutar top by Sari Nordlin, and I'm gonna use some Sandiskan tin liner that's coming. Um, I wanna make the Soho top by Kadri, and I'm gonna use the Pearl Soho Sweetgrass that is coming. Um, Alpine Bloom by, this is, list is getting long. Alpine Bo Bloom, I'll be here for months. Alpine Bloom by Caitlin Hunter, and I think I'll use the Tosh Merino Light that I've got coming from the US. Half and Half Wrap, now that's a monster that's gonna take me a long time, using the Pearl Soho Linen Quill when that comes. Oh, I thought I'd mention about that though, actually. I watched um, Leslie Friend's video on um, doing the nice slip stitch edge, which creates, um, it's similar to Dotted Rays or Exploration Station, where you get that, um, if you slip the, First, sorry, you slip the last three stitches with the yarn in front. Um, with your garter, you get that nice edge. So I think I will do that. The other thing that I saw, or, or um, Leslie mentioned in that video, is converting the wrap and turn short rows to German short rows. But this is actually one area where I probably won't do that. Um, in fact, I saw when I looked up the pattern on the Pearl Soho website, somebody asked about that, and I'll put up the, um, Pearl Soho's response response and they said in this example they actually consciously chose wrap and turn over German short rows because it actually looks better in the garter and along that ridge line and so for me I actually quite like wrap and turn short, short rows in garter in fact you sometimes you don't even need to resolve them because you just end up with that the bar that you get with a wrap just looks like a line for the um for the for you know a garter ridge so I mean, I might, I'm almost certainly going to do a little mini swatch to start with, just to make sure I'm, because this, like, I'm gonna make the large version. I've got three skeins, each of the Soho quill in that sort of icy blue and the poppy red colorway. 
with that, um, there's 260 stitches. So I don't want to be like knitting the whole row and then making decisions with on such a large fabric. I'm going to definitely do like a little mini um, half and half with maybe like 20 stitches, 15, 20 stitches, and just sort of make sure I'm 100% happy with the, slipping the stitches, you know, the wrap and turns, what I want to do before I then jump into that whole large um, project. So yes, so that's um, that's quite a lot, isn't it? Um, skimmer socks, camisole number four, camisole number five, carnaby, mini mock neck tank maybe, um, kuta, soho, alpine bloom, half and half, I'm, that's nine. And then we've got the field sweater which I don't have yarn for, but I really think I have to just, even though I bought the pattern, I, I'm probably gonna just put that aside and, um, cause there's no yarn that's sort of immediate to me and I feel like I've got so much already. Um, look, if something really jumps out at me and I'm like, yes, that's absolutely it. I'll get it for it. Um, cause I do wanna make it right. And the order doesn't matter. Um, and the other thing is pink velvet. Um, I, the, I should find that swatch. Let me grab that swatch. Oh, here it is. Um, most people had the same inclination that I did, that something was just not quite right about the, the coolness of the gray and the warmth of the pink. And I think this actually might look nicer if the base was maybe even a brown rather than a gray. And I know that in, um, in Andrea Mary's, hers is more a brown, the base yarn, and it, it looked really nice, whereas that just, doesn't it doesn't jive together so and I also will make sure that I take a photo to make sure that like and put it in monochrome monochrome and make sure that the value there's enough of a value that this will pop out um, from whatever um, brown I hope I might even have some brown yarn in stash now that I'm sort of switching gears to brown I'll start stash diving and see if I've got some and if I don't I'm just gonna park it and I'll save that that gorgeous pink yarn it will eventually become a pink velvet um, but I'll at a later date. Right, so that's lots and lots of plans upcoming. Um, I thought I'll just talk about the knit along now. So um, the knit along is finishing up on Friday, the 1st of September. So if you can um, uh, post it and like it's, it's whatever, there are no rules. It's like I started off with some kind of structure and then I'm like, no, nah, I just wanna see what you're making. It doesn't have to be finished. I just wanna see what you're making. So if you can um, post a picture on Instagram and use the hashtag mostly knitting YouTube cow. Um, then I get to see what you're making and I'll draw for prizes um, on the weekend and announce them in the next video. Um, I think three patterns, that's probably fair. And each person who, so it's not done by number of projects, it's just done by the number of people. So I'll have a list of people and then pull from that. And I know I'm making up rules as I go along, but oh well. Um, I don't know if I'll do another, I'm really happy to have done a knit along, but um, I feel like it's sort of, um, and I'm really glad to see what everyone's working on, but um, I probably won't do another one like that for um, for a bit. But now at least I'm following people, like I'm getting to see what you guys are making, which is really nice. So I appreciate that. Um, right, so for the people who've posted things this week, I'm just gonna say um, Michelle has made some gorgeous socks in this sort of like pink and purple and blue I don't know if it was meant to be stripy, but it's sort of come out really stripy, so that looks really lovely. Um, Annie made two gorgeous cows and some um, Drea Renee Knits Everyday Socks. So I'll put photos up there. Um, Tracy made a ranunculus sweater in this gorgeous colour. And an, I think I was going to say Ilha sweater because that's what I've said, pronounced it before, but I think it might be Isla. So, um, and I like the sound. I have a friend whose daughter's name's Isla, but that's spelt I-S-L-A. Anyway, maybe it's Isla. I'll say, I, I like the sound of Isla better anyway. So the Isla sweater, um, and they both look amazing on her. So yeah, that's really gorgeous, Tracy. Um, and then some people, their name is not in Instagram, so I'll just use their handle. So Aussie Knits, O-S-I Knits, is making a Wilfrida sweater in this beautiful purple Shibui Knits yarn. And Shibui um, isn't making yarn anymore, so that's obviously very precious yarn. Um, Susie um, has made some more cute beanies and she keeps putting these peppermint crisp um, in the like a peppermint crisp which is a chocolate bar in the photo for 
you know, like I guess for size reference, um, but it just makes me want to eat a peppermint crisp when I see those photos because they're really yummy. It's, um, yeah, I don't know what's in it. It's like very, it's very minty and it's sort of got a real crunch and then like chocolate on the outside. I don't know if you guys have them in the US, but they're really yummy. Um, and the Ponty House 100 made a Sophie scarf and I'm actually really keen to make this pattern. It doesn't really feel like a scarf to me. It sort of feels more like an accessory, just like a little thingy at your neck. Um, and, but I do tend to get a cold neck, so I wouldn't mind having a few of those. So I might actually have a little hunt and see. I think it maybe only uses about 120 meters. So that's not a lot. That's like 25 grams of a fingering weight ball of yarn. I'm sure I have like loads of that. So anyway, I'm keen to make one of those too. That would be plan number 10. So yeah. Get it, it's getting up there, but that's a small one, right? It's not a big plan. Right, so um, I think that's um, that's it for all of the knitting content. I did my Hidden Whips basket. Um, I'm hoping to do that this week. I got my reports. Oh yeah, so I guess that's it. Yeah, that's it for just all the knitting stuff. I'm gonna get onto personal because I don't have any other craft. So if you're leaving um, now, thanks so much for watching. Oh, it's just getting really, the rain's getting a bit heavier now. Um, yeah, so yes, thanks for watching and um, I'll see you next week. Okay, the personal stuff. Um, so this week, uh, last Thursday, so it's actually Wednesday today, I'm actually recording a day earlier because Wednesday, this week, Wednesday is my day off. So I have alternating days off. One week it's Wednesday and next week it's Thursday and it, it was lightning. Um, and it, yeah, it alternates. So this week, Wednesday is my day off. So I thought I'd record today. Um, last Thursday, um, we bought a car. And it's funny, I don't want to sound like ungrateful or whatever, but we bought a car so that my car could go down to the, uh, Alex. So she's got a car to get herself to work, which is great. Um, and also it's a little cheaper to in, insure a cheaper car for an under 25 year old. So she's got my car, but I miss my car. I loved my car. And for me, a car, as long as it works and I'm used to where everything like is and I know how to, I'm too hot, I know how to turn the air conditioning on. It, it's like the music, the everything. Anyway, it sounds silly, but I was feeling a little bit, just getting used to the new car and not like loving all of the learning. But I thought it'll be fine, I'll get used to it. So I bought it on Thursday and I went to lock it and it didn't lock. <laughs> So the buttons on the key were not working and then I got a spare key and the spare key buttons were working. So I'm like, okay, fine. I'll have to just take that key in and get that fixed. But then on Friday, I was picking Zach up from his singing lesson and the windscreen was a little bit dirty and I thought, oh, I'll just, you know, pull the lever and have the wiper fluid come up and clean the windscreen. That's what's supposed to happen. Instead, the wipers are going and no fluid is coming up. So I automatically assume it's my fault, right? Like I haven't read the manual and in this car, everything's different because like the indicators are on the other side, which is fine. Like I, I'm used to that. I'm, my husband's car's European, so I was like, okay. But then I'm looking at it going, this is the wiper thing and is something different? Isn't in every car you pull the thing towards you and the fluid comes out? So I got my, my sons in the car and I'm like, can you YouTube it? How do you do I felt so stupid. Can you please look up on YouTube how in a, in a MG HS Vibe, whatever it is, that, that is what I bought, an MG HS Vibe. How do you turn the wiper fluid stuff to clean the windscreen on? And anyway, um, it wasn't even on the video because it's obviously was just like, it told you how to do it for the rear one, but nothing came out of the rear one either. So I was like, far out. This is a brand new car. So I got out, got home. It's Friday afternoon, right? It's the end of the week. I lift the bonnet, um, you know, test, trying to check if there's actually fluid in the wiper fluid thing, thinking surely in a new car there is fluid in there. So I put some water in and it, it filled up super quickly because obviously it was full. So called the place, yes, bring it in for a service. A service, it's brand new. Oh, sorry. And so I was like, why, um, why is this not working? So that was a bit frustrating. And then for me, I get fearful. What else isn't working? It's brand new. So anyway, we rang them and they said, bring it in, we'll get a hire car for you. Not a hire car, but you know, like a loaner. So I brought it in on Tuesday and 
got in the loaner car, another MG, and off I drive, and it was a really hot day, and I turn the air on, and it's just throwing out warm air. And I was like, how do I work the air? But no, warm air. So I went back to the dealership, and yep, sure enough, on this fairly new MG that has done like 5,000 Ks, the air con doesn't work. So I was like, okay, take a breath, Natasha. My air con obviously works, but anyway, it's gone to my car. I've, so I've got a different loaner. They were very nice. They gave me a different loaner where the air con works, and they were really nice about it, but my car is now at the service centre getting um, sorted with whatever is happening with the why is the what's why is the wiper fluid not coming out and also maybe fixing the key so we'll see fingers crossed hopefully there's no more car stories um oh my poor bubby there's my dog um and i can so there are worse things that can happen. You've got to get things in perspective, but it's just not what you expect with a brand new car. And the idea was that like, I get a new car so that there's less running around because Alex has her car now, my old car. Um, and now I'm running around getting, like having my brand new car fixed. So anyway, fingers crossed. Um, I know other people were like, don't buy MGs. But I was like, I don't know, my husband's looked it up and I'm not blaming him. Um, all cars can have issues, but I'm just, fingers crossed, this isn't a major issue. And if it turns out to be a real problem car, we'll trade it in and get something else. So anyway, that was, that's kind of the car debacle. Um, other things that have happened, I went to a really nice high tea for my, um, my high school. Um, I think I mentioned that in upcoming plans. That was on Saturday afternoon. I went with my friend Jody, and it was really lovely, like nice tea and, um, um, yeah, just a lovely afternoon, tea and sandwiches and cakes and lemon tarts, which are my favorite, I love lemon tarts. Um, so yeah, that was a really nice afternoon and then I finished um, the weekend writing reports. And what I did do, um, my mum is away, my mum lives like two miles away and she's away visiting her sister for a week. So, because um, I had reports to write and I just had a lot going on. Um, and my mum was cool with it. I went over to her house for, um, and I'm still actually there, I'm back home today to record but I'm just staying there for a few days to have some quiet get my reports and um, other kind of schoolwork written and just have a bit of um, a bit of quiet time and a bit of a bit of a breather um, to just recharge and my mum's house is just it's spotless and um, it's just and she has all these soups that she's made in the freezer and she's like yeah just you know take one and have so and they're all sort of individually packaged and um, and they're all homemade that she's made they're absolutely delicious like lamb shanks with barley soup and chicken and vegetable soup so um, yeah it's just been really nice to just have a little bit of quiet time and like Paul's come over and visited and we've sat on the porch and had a cup of tea and um, but yeah it's just just giving me a bit of a break so what's it it's Wednesday today and mum's due back on Saturday so I'll, I'll leave on Friday and give the place a good clean um, not that it needs much because it's such a beautiful like it's so clean but you know clean up after myself um, yeah, so just have a couple more days there. And I'm thinking, um, so that's been my week just gone. I've spent a few days there. Um, tomorrow night um, is the once a month knit night at my local yarn store. And I've never actually been because sort of not long after I started teaching there um, and they started having these, then it was COVID and couldn't do it at all. So I'm thinking I might go tomorrow night. Um, yeah, and then it's Father's Day. <sighs> so, it's a different date in the US, um, but in Australia, it's the first Sunday in September is Father's Day. And um, it's a rumor. This will be my first one without my dad. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be a bit hard. Anyway, we'll do something for my husband. Um, the kids might... Um, Yeah, it's gonna be my first Father's Day without my dad. Um, but we'll take my husband out, the kids and I will hopefully take my husband out for um, for brunch. And um, he's got some, he's bought some stuff from the US um, coming with uh, his dad and his dad's wife, Cindy, um, on Thursday. So that's kind of his presents are coming um, with them. But we'll go out and celebrate with him um, on Sunday. And um, 
Yeah, and that's the other thing that's upcoming is that my um, my in-laws are arriving on Thursday next week, so in eight days. So that will be really lovely. We love spending time with them. They are great with the kids. They're great, like they're great friends to to us. I feel very um, loved and um, cared for by them. They're just beautiful people. So they're arriving um, on Thursday, and they're going to be here with us for about twelve days, and like. Um, we play cards together. So the cards, like we play 500 um, with our other friends online, but we, we play um, 500 together with them and they're very active grandparents. Um, like they play games with the kids. Certainly the kids are a bit older now, but you know, when the kids were younger, always playing board games and fun stuff with the kids. And, um, and they're very active um, house guests. Like usually, which is quite funny, the day that they arrive, um, you know, even though it's been a really long flight, they're usually making dinner for everyone. Um, you know, usually Mexican um, on the day they arrive because they bring with them like a whole host of, um, um, you know, uh, enchilada sauce and um, herdes and el pato and just stuff that it's hard to get here or really expensive. Um, yeah, so we're really looking forward to having them here with us and they're here for 12 days so they'll be here for Zach's 16th birthday. So that will be lovely. Um, yeah, sorry I got a bit emotional there. I'm sure, I know um, Mother's Day and Father's Day can be hard days for people and um, it's never traditionally been a hard day for me because I love my dad and very close to him. Both my parents um, love both of them very much and they've been um, very loving towards me. Uh, which I guess that's the thing is I get to celebrate. Um, anyway, my dad's, so it's Father's Day and my dad's birthday is actually on the 10th of September, which is a, uh, this year, a week after Father's Day. So I think that's, they're going to be hard times. I'll be, I'll be on the phone with my brother and chatting with my mum and um, yeah, just doing a little bit of extra self-care. Anyway, I think I'm going to probably go and have a bit of a cry. <laughs> have a great week and I'll see you on. Hopefully much brighter than I am right now next week. Thanks. Thanks for watching.